So hello, and I welcome you to today's Trading Spotlight webinar here together with Admirals. It's Friday. It's the 20th of January, 2022. Three, I'm sorry, 23. And uh, so today, what we want to do is we want to talk about central banks. We want to talk about the current rate hike cycle. And we also want to dig deeper into quantitative easing, even though it's not a topic. Could be that it uh, becomes a topic rather sooner than later. Um, not necessarily this year, because first of all, we need to talk about uh, rate cuts. But um, when looking, for example, a little over... Um, um, how do we say that? Over, over the counter is, I think, this is not the right wording. But um, if we look at another central bank, not the um, um, ECB or the FED, the US central bank, but instead looking at the Bank of Japan here in this um, context, we know that um, they are currently buying as many bonds as um, they never did before. Uh, the reason for that is that they started to expand their um, yield curve control, let's say. So um, uh, the, 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 the range in which they let um, their interest rates, especially uh, for 10-year Japanese government bonds, uh, fluctuate. So this is so-called yield curve control. Um, we're not there, not yet, at least when it comes to the Fed and the ECB. But still, I want to dig into the contact um, and the, 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 the principles of quantitative easing. And, um, and, and point out why this won't work, but it's probably um, then a must, especially when it comes to um, finding a lender of last resort, um, in this case as a government, um, especially in the US. Yesterday, I've seen that the uh, debt ceiling, um, or not the debt ceiling, but the, the overall debt, US debt, um, it crossed, I think, 31 trillion USD. Um, and the question starts to arise, who will buy these bonds um, and, and, and loan out money, in this case, to the U.S. government, especially um, when they continue to, um, uh, to, 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 to behave like they did in the past. But this is something we want to um, have and look at at the, um, at the end of the webinar. First of all, we want to focus on central banks, what they're working on. We want to focus on um, in this case, rate hike cycles, where we are right now, what to expect. And we want to, in fact, use um, our, our knowledge from, uh, from last week, from inflation in this context. And uh, before, before I continue to speak, let me first of all share my screen. Let me type in a hello traders here in the chat box. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask them. By the way, um, this will also be uploaded. Um, it's recorded and will be uploaded on YouTube. That means um, if you are watching this now, the recording on YouTube, feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below this video. If you like what you will um, see in the upcoming minutes, then please also leave a thumb up here. Um, um, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, so on and so forth, but also comment and ask your questions below this video. And um, record it, YouTube, hello traders. If you have any questions now live here in the event, please ask your questions, I think that's it. But even though most important, the risk disclaimer. So Admirals is a fully regulated broker, which means that here um, you should be aware that if I'm not today. It's, it's it's unlikely that I will, but there's a chance uh, that that um we will talk about markets, that we will make um, um trading a topic here, what to make out of these thoughts, what this could mean for especially gold, for example, but also for dollar JPY short term. I think that makes perfectly sense, especially because I, for example, have a um, short term trade in gold right now running. I, probably I'll guide you a little through the trade um, here. So it's a live trade. Um, we, will, we will look at the demo account. So that's why you won't see a trade within my Admiral's um, um, a demo station, but it's a live account um, for um, a regulatory purposes. I think I'm not allowed to, to show um, a real trading account here, even though it doesn't really matter. It's about the thinking process behind this, the thought process. Um, but if I make any um, 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 trades a topic or potential setups, how you could trade this, please be aware that um, you're taking full responsibility if you duplicate these trades, if you copy them, if you trade um, um, these ideas yourself, be aware that trading involves risks, that we are talking about leveraged products here, that these involve risks, that you could lose money. And in this context, please be aware that you bear all responsibility when it comes to taking trades based on um, the thoughts 
I, I present to you here. So this is no investment advice. It's uh, purely educational content I provide to you. If you take any trades, you're welcome to do so. You can keep all the profits, but also you will uh, keep all the, all the losses if they will occur. And be aware that there are uh, risks involved when trading these products. Um, Admirals, the broker behind these webinar series. I'm very happy to be here. I'm glad to uh, be a presenter here to you for Admirals. A fully regulated, fully regulated broker, as I already said, um, offices around the globe. Um, please check out the website, atmomarkets.com, for further details, um, not just on the risk scam itself, but also in addition to that, where you can find these offices about the regulations. Um, there's a new regulation now beside the SISEC, beside the FCA, um, um, for example, or the, the ASIC in, in Australia. Um, there's also a, a regulatory um, entity or authority in Jordan right now overseeing the business, what this means, why this is the case and so on. All details can be found on the website, check out them. Um, I'm located in Berlin in Germany. So um, just to, to, to keep um, also the, the broker here um, 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 in the middle of, of this, of this um, um, wrap up, let's say, um, that has, um, where this is very interesting because usually when, when talking about a DAX expert or very competitive offering when it comes to DAX trading, CFD trading, um, then Admirals usually comes um, um, to your mind first. And um, that's one of the reasons why you, especially if you're trading indices, should definitely check out Admirals for further details. In addition to that, also very competitive offering when it comes to FX trading, um, um, as I already said, commodities, crypto, and so on and so forth. Check out the website for further details. Um, I think that's probably the, the, the best way to, to, uh, to put it and to sum it up. And then it's one, world, one broker. Further details on that also can be found on the website. Now, what we want to do is we want to dig deeper into today's topic. And I want to um, um, give a little, uh, it's not a wrap up. It's more like a, um, we want to we wanna, um, um, remind ourselves or remember what we talked about last week when we talked about inflation. And um, you probably recall this um, 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 chart I presented to you here. And um, it was on inflation rates and it was on interest rates. And um, so these interest rates we are talking about today, um, they are a, a, a main tool for, for, um, for central banks to use um, to keep an economy from overheating. That's probably a rough way to put it. I have another slide in a few seconds and, and we will dig into this um, in a few seconds of how um, a fair rate level can be defined because this is usually very interesting, right? So you're looking um, at the charts, you're probably trading and then you know, okay, well, you read it, let's say on the website at markets.com, um, you have uh, um, 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 research here, for example, and, and then you read, okay, or you check out the, the Forex calendar, for example, economic calendar, and you see, okay, Okay, well, central bank is um, um, giving their rate a decision here today, tonight, in case of the Fed, when you're located in, let's say, uh, Central Europe, for example, that's usually at the end of the trading day. And then, and then you probably have wondered um, at least once, not just where these uh, suggestions come from. So we already know where the consensus comes from. When we look at, let's say, numbers like non-farm payrolls, two weeks ago, we had the uh, US employment situation. And um, I, I guided you through where this consensus comes from and, and, and where these um, um, estimates come from, from analysts. They are called, and then you you yeah, you yeah somehow sum, sum them up. You divide them by the number of analysts you were talking to, and you have an average. And this is then, in fact, uh, that are not from payrolls constants. And if there is a big difference between um, um, the, the estimates from these analysts and what the print finally is, well, then there's usually a big um, um, changing direction or, well, move in the market. Um, 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 rising volatility is usually what you will get to see. Um, very roughly speaking, certainly. But now um, we are digging a little deeper than that because now you might wonder, okay, um, I get somehow that if inflation keeps um, um, keeps going, or or if we see a massive rise in inflation, as we've seen now following uh, the, the the pandemic and the way it was um, um, treated, especially by governments, what they did was very simple. They looked every, everyone down. Um, they um, said, "You stay at home," and um, they shut down the economy if you want. Um, and they counted that to 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 keep, let's say, the people silent. It's a very rough way to to say, but at the end, that's exactly what happened. Politicians said, "Well, in here's." 
money. We um, um, deliver it as a present to you. And um, these are like stimulus checks in the US, for example. And um, you need to find someone who funds these stimulus checks. Where's the money coming from? And they print it out of thin air. The problem is if you don't produce anything um, or you produce way less due to lockdowns and you counter that by flooding the markets with liquidity, well, rather soon or later, inflation will keep up then. And, and especially if we, we turn to normal, let's say, and the lockdowns are lifted um, and people start to consume more and um, also spend their money and the money starts to accelerate and, 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 and chase the goods, which are now less than they were where before the lockdowns, because there were less goods produced, well, there's lots of money chasing goods, and the natural result is inflation is picking up. If you see that, and if inflation starts to run away, if this is then accelerated even, or you find another catalyst, which is, in fact, only a small portion. So here, this is the, the, the small part of um, the invasion of uh, Russia in the Ukraine, and, and, and what you're then getting... Um, um, how can we say that it's 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 sold to us um, um, as the put inflation but if you if you carefully watch you can see that inflation started to pick up massively already before that so um and that had nothing to do with putin or inflation is very smart right and and anticipates that there will be an invasion in Ukraine in ukraine but you can certainly see that this um a massive run in inflation here from below two percent to nearly ten percent in in roughly one year to of months of the course of the year 2021 well that's a that's a big anticipation that there will be an uh, invasion i mean to be to be honest that that has something that there's another reason to that and the reason to that is because you had lots of um, um liquidity provided and um there were fewer goods which were produced and lots of money chased fewer goods and that's usually what then results in let's call it runaway inflation that's an easy way to put it but how do you um, um how do you how do you counter that because this inflation um, it's something which is obviously um, um, negative, especially if it gets out of control for an economy, uh, because people have less money here in this case to, to chase goods. Um, inventory start to build, especially if inflation starts to run away, not just due to um, um, lesser goods being available, but also if essentials like energy, for example, as we've seen here, um, 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 start to rise massively in terms of cost, while people um, spend more money on these essentials, respectively, if you start to save. This is also true, especially once you... Um, once you once you probably look into a not such let's call it prosperous future i don't really know will i have a job in six months from now or is my company in trouble due to whatever here in germany for example um um, um we, are, we are let's call it very industry focused if um energy prices get out of control and people um or not people but companies um, um have to spend so much more on energy that they really um can't um produce their goods um profitable anymore well they run um out of cash rather sooner or later and go out of business because they can't really forward all the costs um, 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 here, which which are resulting out of rising energy prices to the um, um, consumer at the end, because the consumer will then just skip these goods and, and don't buy them at all. So at the end, it's a very, very um, um, difficult situation for the overall economy and inflation, which gets out of control here, especially if it's such a, how can we call this? It's like, um, um, it, it's a... It's it's a result out of bad politics. It's um um it's 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 homemade to some extent. It has nothing to do with um, um a very prosperous future. Um um people looking into um from an economy perspective and chasing goods or something like that and very optimistic outlook. But it's more like it's it's to some extent it's 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 homemade inflation. And how do you how do you how do you counter that? Well. You start to make sure that people um, don't spend their money anymore. Respectively, um, you 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 somehow try to deflate um, the overall process which is taking place here. And the Fed, respectively, it's not just the Fed, but you also here in terms of the euro, the um, um, eurozone. EZ is as short for eurozone or Euro European Central Bank. Well, what you what you then do is you start to aggressively hike rates and make money more expensive. And why do we do that? Why, why do we make money more expensive? Um, because then people get something for keeping the money in the bank account. 
um, first of all, because now where you're chasing goods and, and because you say, well, what shall I do with the money? Um, I have a very good friend, for example, um, and he's self-employed himself and he's um, working as a, as a, um, um, uh, as a, as a, as a, as a painter. So, um, and, and people are building, for example, houses and they want to have um, a nice environment around them. And um, well, if they keep the money at 0%, even sometimes you, 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 you're um, getting punished for keeping money in the bank, negative interest rates, this is nothing else. And you try to get people to spend. Um, you punish them for keeping the money in the bank account. So, well, they spend. And what do you do? Well, you buy a house or you, you paint the walls in a nice color or you spend them on furniture, whatever. Um, the thing is that now people are more... Um, they are stepping back from this behavior. They, they don't do this anymore because now they see, well, first of all, the economy overall um, sees massive pressure, headlines. We don't really know what the future will bring. We didn't even know that before. But before that, we probably not just had the money in our bank accounts, but also in some investment products. And they were all rising. You could buy whatever you wanted, like a I don't know, GameStop or AMC, even, even trash stocks um, went to the moon, in fact, and, and you felt rich or at least richer. Right now, everything is coming down over the course of the year 2022. So you're losing wealth, um, even though it's, it's just in, in um, 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 let's say, it's, 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 it's not realized, but it's like um, floating gains, respectively losses. Um, but there's another psychology right now. In addition to that, you're probably looking into a future where you say, well, I don't really know um, how, how my company will do, if it will survive the next um, um, recession, for example, um, or if, if they probably will um, 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 survive the recession, but have to probably cut costs massively by laying off people. This is something we can see overall. In, uh, before this webinar started here, Google just announced we are firing 12,000 people. Yesterday, Microsoft announced we are firing 10,000 people. Already two months ago, um, Meta, Facebook was calling um, um, and saying, hey, guys, we are firing more than 10,000 people. And this is just the big tech companies. Um, we are not talking about um, um, smaller um, um, business businesses in this case, especially, where you will see the same effect, probably even more, because they don't have that much cash at hand to um, um, swim through th such a recession. So the thing is now, you, you want to keep the money out of the cycle. You want to get inflation down. You also want to probably... Um, get a get a um, um, healthy correction in in the in the business cycle in general because many many startups especially who had a vision probably but who were not yet profitable some of them didn't even have a vision but it was like um, they were get, getting money for for nothing and then they were like like zombies to some extent just um, 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 continue continues doing business whatever business that might be and 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 not really growing as a company or making money but more like yeah, it was like like a zombie walking walking dead, if you want. Um, and now you're taking this cheap money away from them, and they're going out of business. All this in combination brings inflation down, and it results out of the central banks making the money more expensive. And how do you make money expensive? The price for money is yield. And if you increase rates, in this case, um, you bring down inflation. And this is exactly what, what you can, can see here. Um, Coming here to central banks and interest rates, you will find the, um, um, a picture in a few seconds here on the left. Um, let's, let's first of all go through um, uh, um, um, these points I just mentioned once again, central banks and, and interest rates. So first of all, when it comes to interest rates, we speak about the potential yield an investor or the buyer of a currency. In our case, when talking about Forex, for example, can expect to earn, respectively has to pay if he wants to borrow money from a bank. If the money is cheap, which means like um, you have quantitative easing, you have yields tacked at 0%, well, what you will do is you can, for example, borrow money from a bank and the banks will hand it out to you because the banks were punished to keep the money um, in-house at the central banks, for example. Um, remember then the negative interest rates, for example, um, you, you are really punished to keep money in a bank because the bank works with the money. So for example, um, 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 someone I really well know, um, he had, he sold his, 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 his house um, and had over 1 million in his, in his um, 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 bank account, in fact. And then one day he got a call from his bank um, um, uh, 
employee or advisor, financial advisor. And he said, well, um, Mr. X, we have a problem here. And, and they said, what, what is the problem? Well, you have too much money. I've never remembered that I ever, ever have heard something so ridiculous. You have too much money. It's too much money in the bank account. Uh, what do you mean? It's too much money in the bank? Yeah, well, we, we are getting punished for you keeping the money here. So please take the money, go somewhere else or buy something big, buy another house, buy stocks, buy a car, buy what, do something with the money, but don't keep it here because um, we have to pay a lot. It's not one client, but it's thousands of clients who are in a similar situation. And um, so that's why they handed out loans, for example, for lots of people who were then buying houses. Um, so investing the money in the stock market, you saw with all the cheap liquidity, it drove prices for um, 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 houses to the moon. It also drove, um, for example, stock markets to the moon. And um, so right now this changes because as I already said, if inflation kick, keeps kicks in and, 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 and moves higher, well, then you see that uh, banks, respectively central banks in this context, make this money um, more expensive, and it's then not a punishment anymore to keep the money in the bank. So now, after yields went from zero and minus 1%, per, 1 let's say, um, to let's say 0.5 or 1%, well, a bank won't call you anymore and tell you, hey, I'm sorry, but um, please take your money and invest it somewhere. But instead, they will say, keep the money here. It's fine. It's no, no big deal because um, we can make money here. So this is our bread and butter business. Look at the just um, um, earnings releases from JP Morgan, for example, where um, I think the same was also true for, for Bank of America. Um, they surprised on the upside with their earnings per share because they were making more in their loan business and uh, from a yield perspective. So they start to make money again with the bread and butter business yields and, and loaning out money in this context. And that's why you won't get a, such a call today anymore. But coming back to now central bank and interest rates. Um, so if a central bank now decides to increase interest rates, for example, during times of significant economic growth, but also in the current environment where just inflation kicked in after um, these, these um, massive um, um, government spending um, 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 took place, it should naturally result in higher demand on the local currency in order to get higher returns and vice versa. So that usually means um, if you see a central bank hiking rates um, and another central bank is lagging here, I mean, this is a, a global concept, but let's let's just jump into let's just jump into into the charts here and just um, get a get a get an idea on what I'm talking about. So, for example, when when we look at what happened in the euro USD, for example, over the course of the year 2021 and then especially 22, um, there were certainly other drivers, especially here in Europe, but the main driver was certainly rates. And while, and, and let's come back to the presentation once again here and going back here. So you can see we started hiking rates mid of 2022, while the Fed already started hiking rates very aggressively, by the way, compared to the ECB, especially at the beginning of 2022. So they had a, um, let's say, a, they had a um, uh, jump starts, probably wrong word. It's like six month difference. And then you also saw 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.75 basis points rate hikes, while nothing happened here um, in, the, in the Eurozone. What does this mean? Well, that means that if you see that um, here we are, we are um, um, having a central bank fighting inflation, um, I mean, even though probably risking a recession, but doing something against this development in general, this is something which makes the underlying currency more attractive. In addition, certainly to the um, um, geopolitical developments with the Ukraine and Russia and all that, and, and, and so on and so forth. But probably also um, due to the, the, the very inhomogeneous um, um, Eurozone compared to the US, for example. But this is usually driving, a, 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 in this case, um, 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 a currency lower or respectively a currency lower if it's unattractive and driving then the the, the counterpart um, here in this case the US dollar driving it higher due to um, the the more attractive yield you're getting here so you can lend money for free in fact points one percent 
if at all. Um, looking at, for example, dollar JPY, the same is true, probably even more than that, um, because here we had um, a continuous, um, um, continuously aggressive quantitative easing and even qualitative easing, given the yield curve control from the Bank of Japan, um, while the, the, the um, uh, Fed hiked rates aggressively. That was what drove, especially here after the breakout early in 2022, what drove um, dollar JPY from 116 up to 150. Um, now we are coming back. Why? Well, the market is already anticipating that there will um, a loser monetary policy following what we've currently with Nessing um, in terms of the, the rate height cycle. Because when looking, for example, at equities, like um, here, in this case, the NASDAQ, you see if you make money more expensive, and people are not that motivated anymore to keep all this liquidity and pump it into, into stocks, for example, especially banks who profit from this the most in this case, or wealth um, asset managers and so on and so forth. Well, the natural result is a drop um, in, 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 in prices here. And now you might probably say, okay, but, but we're at 5% and we're already talking about losing monetary policy. Um, but if, if the Fed continues to hike, isn't that then usually... and, and Certainly, she will, at least in February and probably also again in March. Um, why, why isn't it driving um, equity prices even lower than that? The reason for that is simple, because the market right now, as I pointed out last week, um, is a, is a um, discounting mechanism. That means um, it, it looks into the future and it sees in the second half of this year that we will see a rate cut again. But before we come to this um, and, and dig deeper, first of all, here's Again, the um, um, uh, chart. One second, please. I have to, I just have to make sure that I write down, that I have to write down um, some pre-market data here because today I, I also, once I finish here the webinar, um, I will write, jump into uh, the trading action. Yesterday, you have probably seen that Netflix was, was delivering earnings and I have to, to write it um, um, down here to be well prepared due to my checklist I go through. Um, and, uh, um, and this checklist then also tells me how much I should risk. And that's also another um, um, car, um, um, company or stock, which is also of interest. It's Alcoa. It's not a, um, a very interesting trading stock, but after uh, delivering earnings and now seeing quite elevated volume today, um, somehow it suggests that there might be a chance for another play on the downside, um, especially with the week um, um, close yesterday. But coming back to central banks um, and coming back to inflation. So now <clears throat> um, the Taylor rule, and this is exactly what, what is the most interesting thing about this now for you might, uh, might be, because you wonder, okay, where, where does the, the central banks get their yields or interest rate levels from? What, what's the target rate? So if we, if we look here, for example, coming back to, um, 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 to, 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 to these charts, well, last week, for example, we looked at the Fed watch tool. And, and you probably recall, um, we looked at the numbers um, for the end of this year, we went through, for example, um, um, what to expect in the second half, especially where to find the peak in, in terms of the inflation. Inflation is coming down. This is something we saw last week, for example. Um, and, and, and now the thing, the main question is, in fact, well, the current target rate is 425, 450. Um, you, we also dig deeper into these economic projections. Let's just um, here look at the so-called dot plot once again from December. So uh, last month, one month ago, the Fed delivered also these economic projections. And then you see here, 2023, um, they are saying at the end of the year, we expect the rates, the target rate to be at 500 to 525 basis points. This is exactly what, what, what you can see here. You have to think a little into this um, and, 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 and find out. So here's the, the target rate, here's the year. And these dots are all um, um, Fed officials and how they, how they think where um, the, the, the target rate should be at the end of the year. And you can see the most um, dots can be found here around 500 to 525. When looking at the Fed watch tool, you can see, well, this is significantly below that. So the market is already anticipating discounting um, in this case that the Fed will have to lose a monetary policy because we are about to see a massive um, economic drop, a deep recession probably in, in, the, in, the, um, uh, in the US. But 
how does a Fed official come to the conclusion uh, that they have to, or where is the fair level, let's say? What, what is the fair yield for your currency? And there's um, something we refer to as Taylor rule. Um, so this is a chart from, it's a little older, so from 2019, it was even before COVID here in this case, um, but this doesn't really matter. Um, it just gives you an idea. It's a theoretical approach, but one which gives you already an idea where all these problems also right now come from um, in terms of inflation and what potentially also um, added fuel to the fire to some extent. It wasn't just the bad politics um, around COVID and, and, and how they handled the pandemic in terms of lockdowns and everything. Um, and, and how they countered um, or tried to silence people by, by um, um, just handing out um, stimulus checks. But in addition to that, there was also a starting way earlier. Um, so what you see here is, in this case, we're not talking about the Fed anymore, but we're talking now about the ECB. Um, and the ECB, by the way, let's go back here. So capped interest rates, even following COVID, very, very low. You can, you can, you can see it here. So um, it's, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't see US. I'm sorry, here. Um, this is the EC, um, ECB in this case. So this dotted line is the yield and you can see we stayed there. So the orange line you can see here, it never changed. It never changed. We continue to do that. We, we, there, was, there was no further um, like rate cuts, but instead they just pumped more liquidity into the system, more QE. That was the, the answer to everything. Um, and they had to. So there's several reasons for that, especially when looking at the southern periphery in Italy and um, the developments there. And if you hike rates too aggressively, it will spill over to these, let's call them weak economies first, especially Italy in this case, and, and based on their, on their massive debt load they have, debt to GDP ratio, which is um, even worse right now as it was um, um, in Greece when we had the first European and um, um, yeah, probably let's call it the first European debt crisis around 2011, but there's a big difference. While um, Greece is very small, um, in case of Italy, we're talking about the third biggest economy uh, GDP wise um, uh, of the Eurozone. So if um, Italy, collapses, let's say, the economy collapses, the euro collapses. This, this is just how things will turn out. Rather sooner than later, it's just a question of time. In fact, it's, I, I don't even ask the question if it's, uh, um, um, will this happen? I'm sure it will. Um, the only question is um, when it will happen, in fact. That, that, that's one of the reasons why I'm very skeptical in terms of the euro. But coming back now to, to this, to this uh, Taylor rule. So we kept here this orange line for way too long. Um, in black, this is the Taylor yield. And, and we don't dig too, too deep now into um, 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 the, the, the parameters and, 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 and what Taylor is looking at here. And um, in this case, to calculate the fair yield um, for, for, um, for an economy. But in black, you can see that um, we already, based on what happened in 2016, following also the Brexit and all the developments there, there was a, a, a massive rise um, here in the Taylor rule, given the economic projections, given the economic data, employment situation, economic growth, and so on and so forth. And the ECB kept levels zero and, and even below that level um, here when it came to interest rates. So they didn't hike. Um, and it was only a matter of time once uh, inflation picks up and, and COVID was the final catalyst, which, which delivered um, 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 the, 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 yeah, the fuel, which then resulted in this, let's call it explosion when it comes to um, um, inflation. And um, in fact, the Taylor rule um, delivers an idea based on these economic data, you get um, what's the fair level in terms of, of, of rates, in fact. So when you look at the, let's come back here and let's open Admirals, the website, admiralmarkets.com. And um, let's have a look here at analytics, the tab and Forex calendar. And probably let's go back one week. Okay, um, and we do this for, for, for a very simple reason. And I will take out all these checks here and I will only keep Japan because I know that Japan delivered where had the Bank of Japan last week I'm sorry let's do it that way so all important impact events and there you can see it 
the BOJ rate decision. So you wonder now, I mean, if, if we look at, at, a, at a data set like um, inflation, for example, well, you know, okay, there's analysts and they're um, um, asked investment bankers um, um, and, and primary deals and so on and so forth. And Bloomberg Reuters calls them and says, hey, what's your, what's your um, idea? of and, and let's say Japanese inflation. Um, so what's your number based on your calculations? And they give out a number and then they, they, they calculate an average. That's, that's, in fact, how this is done. But when it comes to rate decisions, you probably wonder, okay, where, where do these, these numbers come from? Why, how, how, minus 0.1%, why? Um, I mean, sh sure, you, you have a, um, a history and why this is the case and what's the rhetoric being used from central bankers and so on and so forth. But all in all, you probably have wondered, where do these numbers come from? And um, even though this is only a theoretical idea, um, it's, it's giving you an idea on what these central bankers are looking at. When you hear them talk about employment situation and, and inflation in general, um, sometimes consumer spending, whatever it might be, um, these components are part of this Taylor yield or this Taylor formula. Um, and they give you an idea on what's the fair yield level. Certainly, this is just theoretically speaking, but something to keep in mind and to orient your decisions um, um, on, in fact, and um, how you how you how you get there um, here to these to these levels you find then in the forex calendar. So that's that's it on 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 where um, interest rates come from, let's say, and and why and how um, central banks, in fact, decide where um, um, to 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 have the the yield level if this differs. Well, I'm not saying this will result in trouble, but usually what you should see is kind of a correlation between these two. Um, and the better the correlation, the less likely you will run into trouble. Once there is a big gap between these two, um, rather sooner or later, and, and I mean, there might be reasons for that, political reasons most of the time. Um, but if you, let's say, don't follow the signs, the politicians will rather sooner or later run into trouble. Let's put it that way. Um, or the central bank. It's not the politicians, but due to um, 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 politicians not following signs in this case, because they have other interests, let's say, um, uh, which makes it likelier for them, especially in the short term, to get re-elected. Um, they probably, they will put pressure on the politicians here at the central bank and tell them, well, you can't hike rates because of this and this and this and that reason. Um, in case of the euro, it's even more complicated than that due to the um, 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 structure of the euro and, and these um, economies um, having, uh, some of them having trouble to, to, to keep up, let's say, in terms of economic growth when it comes to Germany, for example. Um, but all in all, this is the main reason where these gaps come from. And the longer these gaps last, the bigger the mean reversion rather soon or later will happen, respectively. It will force, or inflation here in this case, forces the central bank to keep up with the theoretical um, um, formula or the theoretical um, um, rates level, which you should be based on the um, um, economic um, situation of the underlying economy. That being said, um, let's have a look here at quantitative easing. Um, this is just for informational purposes. And um, also here, the chart I have is not up to date. So it's like 2020. That was um, around COVID and, and the explosion back then. You will see if you check out trading economics, for example, tradingeconomics.com, you will see that the um, balance sheet of the ECB already chopped above um, 8 billion, I think even uh, a trillion, I'm sorry, um, 9 trillion, something like that, even here. And um, so that being said, um, this, is, this is not up to date, but what you can certainly see is that it hasn't resulted in any kind of economic um, prosperity. But um, usually this, this quantitative easing approach, once you can't work with rate cuts anymore, um, you have to go another um, um, path in this case. So with Quendi, I, I just read through these bullets and that, that makes clear what I'm talking about. So with QE, so quantitative easing, this is in short QE, central bank purchases longer term securities from the open market in order to increase the money supply and encourage lending and investment, which happened. Um, but in fact, it's uh, not that it that it resulted in economic growth, but it's more like that it resulted in asset bubbles um, we created, 
may it come to uh, the, the uh, real estate sector, may it be in the stock market or in the bond market or wherever, you saw that there was a massive inflow of cheap liquidity into these asset classes, but it wasn't that's, that, let's say that the overall economy or the small guy profited from this massive monetary stimulus. And um, so you can see it here in the next bullet point, buying these securities adds new money to the economy to some extent. It, 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 it just trickles down. It's not the whole amount uh, you add to the economy. Um, but what, what happens, in fact, is um, you expand, especially the central bank's balance sheet, and you expand, um, to some extent, the, the balance sheet of banks itself. Um, and uh, so when short-term interest rates are either at or drop below zero, you can't cut them further. Well, you certainly can, going negative then, in this case. Um, but normal market operations targeting interest rates then are no longer effective once this happens. And then a central bank starts to um, buy specified amounts of assets to purchase. In case of the Bank of Japan, for example, it's not just that they buy um, a specifi specified um, amounts of, of, of assets to purchase, but also um, um, the duration. They, they, they target on, on um, several aspects of the yield curve in this case. So for example, they say, well, we want to um, um, keep 10-year um, government bonds at um, uh, yields at, at zero, for example, or let them fluctuate. Um, in a certain range. And then we, we buy especially these, for example. So this is not quantitative easing. It's also quantitative easing, but, but also I'd like to add a qualitative easing. So it's like a QQE to some extent. It's also something um, usually probably will um, 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 see. It's a YCC. It's a yield curve control in this case. Um, but this is usually what you get to see. And um, so with the current developments, especially let's come here to, to, to trading economics probably and have a look at the United States. And look here at the government and especially at the government debt. Well, if you see something like that, this is going back till 1930, something like that, probably even further than that. So 16 years, uh, something like that, 1930 around. Um, you see it now hit over 331 trillion. Um, that being said, and uh, the overall developments, especially when it comes to um, also, the, the, the economic outlook, for example, difficulties right now, overall, I mean, this is very global now, and, and we won't dig into this too deep, but um, the overall situation in the US gets worse by the minute, let's say, with, with this um, um, massive um, debt, which, which is accumulated. And rather soon later, there will be um, the question, who continues to buy debt? Um, and the situation will, in my personal opinion, very quite soon be quite similar to what we're currently witnessing in, in Japan, where in fact, the lender of last resort um, is the Bank of Japan. So it's like um, the government needs money and it's created out of thin air or it's, it's like it's, they, 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 they give out bonds and they are bought by the Bank of Japan um, because market participants are not really willing this is very roughly speaking, but not really willing to, to give um, or hand out money to um, um, a country in this case who has no real business model, or at least that the business model starts to, to um, somehow show signs of weakness. Um, and so that having in mind with this, with this massive increase in government debt, simply speaking, I think um, that rather soon later, especially once um, this rate cycle um, comes to an end, and by the way, we will see this rollover, uh, that this is usually something which will then result in the Fed to be the lender of last resort and buy um, government um, um, bonds again in a very aggressive fashion. They have to do that, um, which brings us to the question, um, how, how do we trade this right now? And, and the problem is, I am Unfortunately, I forgot it. I just realized I forgot to, um, to show you the chart, but it was a fantastic chart. I came across over the last weekend. Um, it's, let me just find it here and share it with you. So where we have it, where do, there we go. 
So this is from Lawrence McDonald, a chart which shows um, what happens to gold once uh, the rates height cycle um, ends. And this is a, a chart he, he published last week on Saturday, on Saturday. And, and, and this is very interesting. So in, in um, uh, white, I'm sorry, white. So in white, you have the um, Fed. It's going back to 2000 in this case. So it's not um, 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 extended into um, um, the history in the 1990s or something like that, but only 2000, but still 20 years. And there were several um, ends of rate height cycles in this case, um, when it came to the Fed and what happened to gold. And um, so you can see that we are potentially coming to an end of this rate hike cycle. That was something, at least what the market is playing when looking at the Fed watch tool. Um, and I'm oh, sorry. Um, and, and we're looking here at this. Well, the question is what will happen to, to especially gold in this context? Um, and what you can see is that gold here, once this happened, that was around once the new economy burst, that was 170% um, gold increased in value. That looks ridiculously small, but it was an increase of 170 USD, 170% uh, um, rise. The same thing happened here. Um, that was in 2007, 2008, uh, once the um, great financial crisis hit. Um, gold here, more uh, nearly nearly um, um, a quadrupled here, 272% um, increase over the course of something like five years or so. Um, then we saw another peak that was um, around COVID. You can see it there. So massive quantitative easing, another 153%. So if we average this and say, let's say 100%, probably 150% from the current levels we're witnessing here in gold, it seems likely that there will be a massive run higher um, over the course of the next, let's say, five years, if the Fed does not continue to hike rates, but in, in fact has to, to, to cut rates, and if there's an economic downturn, probably even has to then spend, um, um, no, they have, don't have to spend, but they have to buy a government bonds because um, this is the lender of last resort given the current fundamental developments we see in the US. So um, that people will just step back from the greenback and say, well, guys, Yes, the greenback is around, let's say, for 200 years, not even call more, probably for 150, something like that. Um, and we could trust, and it um, 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 overcame developments, First World War, Second World War, um, several economic depressions, and so on and so forth. But this is getting out of control now, um, especially once, or if you remember that um, um, some of this till 1971 was the US dollar was backed by gold. Um, and now things are getting completely out of control which could result in quantitative easing being the result out of this, which is then also um, a potential driver for further bullishness in, in, in gold in this case. So very roughly speaking, but just to give you an overview, I promised to show you a trade, um, something here I, I just wanna dig deeper into. Let's see, does it play out so far? Well, I'm ahead something like five, five bucks um, or so. Aiming right here for 1,900 for, this is a retracement trade, why? Well, because, I think gold just got a little too parabolic. And then the morning we saw a steeper run into 930 and then rolled over here. And um, given that the market here after this, let's call it this, is it really a stuff we can, well, probably. Um, that was shortly after uh, German markets and European markets opened and we saw this stuff and then rolling over and then there was no real pushing back. And this, this consolidation here um, was, one of the reasons why I said, well, I'm, I'm willing to, to, to short it here, small position, nothing big, but small position, I'm risking against the highs and going for, going for a pull in here, let's say down to 1,900, probably, probably a little lower than that. Um, let's see how, how things develop, if there's a fundamental catalyst, but into the fat um, next, not next week, but the week after on the 2nd of, of February, probably we got a little ahead of ourselves and then probably pulling in now from these levels, even though this is just a short-term trade, a pull-in trade, um, I could still imagine um, that after such a pull-in and especially this trend line, which we developed here, this, this purple line holding, um, that we are about to see at least a, a push back to 2000, the first quarter of um, 2023. Uh, and so that's it for my end. Um, I hope, I hope you enjoyed the webinar. Uh, if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact Admirals directly per um, um, uh, via call, via mail, or also uh, via the YouTube channel, via the comment section, wherever. I mean, um, 
it, it um, 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 is easily easily available, let's say. Um, and uh, feel free to to check out the website, as I already said, admiralmarkets.com for further details. And again, send an email if you have any questions. That's it for my end. Um, happy trading. What's your stops? Talk to you next week. I really look forward to it. All the best. See you.